Camille Caldwell. And my name is Jocelyn Clark. And, and this, this is WJ GTV with your weekly school news. Cover the latest sports events, talk about gun control, interview Miss Elder, experience Dream Fest, find out what's worn at the shoals, and see what's new in the Jack Shop. But first, here's WJAG TV Sports. <laughs> soccer team has had an overall successful season. Last Saturday they played Clark Central and lost in PKs. It was a close game. Some players talked to us about how they felt about the game. It was, it was rough. Uh, a lot of us thought yeah, this would be the year, but uh, you know, luck wasn't in our favor and we'll keep on chugging tonight against one of Grove and then in the playoffs. Uh, it felt good though. Morgan School was the first team to do that so far this season. Um, they're 15 and 0, I guess now, um, and I would really like for us to close it out there at the end. But like I said, it just wasn't in the cards, so we'll keep on moving on. We think that we just have a lot more technical ability, and that also our tactics are just going to outplay them, and that we'll be able to hang a couple goals on them and be fine. You know, we were all pretty tired in the game Saturday night. Um, you know good week of practice both our week so it was wearing in on guys especially in the long season that capped off here um, so hopefully we can finish out the season uh, tonight against Walnut Grove and then maybe deep in the playoffs but yeah. Miss Elder is a favorite of many students here at Cedar. Tori Jones set her down and get to know her better with 30 questions with Cedar Blueprints. Here's Tori with the story. I was looking around trying to find a good teacher to interview oh. and I finally chose one. Miss Elder, a zoology and physics teacher. A lot of students like her, not only because she's a good teacher, but she is very kind. I asked her 30 questions to get to know her a little better, and this is what I found. Hey, Miss Elder, I'm just going to ask you 30 questions. They're just randomized questions, so answer them as best as you can. Okay. So we're going to get started. Okay, sounds good. What is your favorite family tradition? Oh, Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. It's the time we can come together, eat, talk, and catch up. Right. Yeah. A meal that you could eat for the rest of your life? Ah, tam tamales. I love tamales. What college did you attend? I attended Boston University. Would you bungee jump or skydive? Sky skydive. I love skydive. I love being in the air. Right. What is the luckiest thing that happened to you? Luckiest thing that happened to me was being accepted to Cedar Shoals High School to teach zoology in Athens, Georgia. Wow. <laughs> what fashion do you wish could come back? I love the grunge style. I love the plaid and stuff. I love Pearl Jam and all of those groups from back then. <laughs> the last movie you watched? Last movie I watched, Hallmark. I love the Hallmark Channel. Right. How does technology make teaching more simple or difficult? Um, I like technology because it does make life simple for students. I can get them in for their information. If they're out, they can make up all their work. They see it on screen. It's a snap. Where were you born? I was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. What sort of morning routine do you get jazz for class? Oh, I love to play like hip hop music on my video screen here. I like to listen to classical music or meditation music. I love cleaning up my classroom and just getting it ready for students. Right. What move, movie title best describes your life? I'm not sure if it's a movie, movie title, but it's the serendipity. The most interesting place you've ever been? The most interesting place I've ever been has been Hawaii. Oh. Wow. What is a difficult task you have accomplished? Difficult task I've accomplished is finishing school. So can you explain what is one hidden talent that you have? A hidden talent? Well, I love to play the piano. Oh. What inspires you? 
Ooh, you guys do. I love Cedar Shoals High School students. It's <laughs> the worst gift you have received. The worst gift I have received. I don't think I've received the, the worst gift. I Would you prefer cake or pie? Ooh, cake. I love Ooh, cake. What's the most annoying habit that other people have that you do not like? Well, here's one thing, um, but guess what? I think it kind of went out when they changed the boards. You know when students would go up and scratch the boards? Yeah. That used to drive me crazy. But what do you wish you knew more about? Oh, I wish I knew more about mathematics and engineering. Huh? What TV movie do you refuse to watch? Um, refuse to watch? Ooh, well, I don't like to see, um, I can't take scary movies. Right. What would it be an ideal way to spend the weekend? Well, somewhere to where there's a beach or some kind of water. Mm. What is something you like to do old-fashioned way? Um, I like knitting sometimes. I like just to sit and knit. How do you relax after a hard day of work? Uh, I like to hit the gym. What's the farthest you've been away from home? Um, the farthest place I've ever been was Aruba. What's your dream car? They now would be a Tesla. What is something you've been meaning to do but just hasn't got around to it? I want to go back and study more science. Oh. Ch chance to uh, change your name, what would you change it to? Oh my god, that's a question I never thought of. How about Christy? Oh, that's great. <laughs> if you won the lottery and you had a chance to give up your teaching um, career, what would you do instead? I'd want to travel the world, but I think I'd come back to education and volunteer. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. I'm glad I learned more about Miss Elder, and I hope you did too. But join me next time with Tori with the story. Wow, Miss Elder is sure one interesting lady, but something else that's interesting is happening in the Cedar Shoals Jag Exchange. Camille Caldwell went to gather details on the new addition to the Jag Exchange. Next is Rowan Johnson. If you're looking for a prom dress or if you're just in, uh, curious of what we have, again, come by and see me anytime. Any class period is fine. I'll let you in and see them. The best time to come by is during your lunch. Um, we'll, we'll let you look through them. You can take them and try them on if you want. Um, also, if you like a dress and you decide you want to take it home with you, you do not have to bring it back. It's your dress to have. Um, so just keep that in mind. Well, um, since we've gotten the dresses in the shop, it's been I mean, nice. A few people have come through, you know, got a dress or two. Um, I think they're nice dresses, if you agree with my opinion. But I think it's a nice little addition, especially if you know, people who need dresses because you know, they're free of charge. The dresses are available now. Um, up until the day of prom, so up until that Friday prom. Um, after prom, we're probably going to donate them um, to Goodwill, so um, if you'd like one after prom, you could probably still come and, and we can accommodate that, but um, definitely now until the day of prom. I would recommend buying one, most definitely. You know, I would love to see someone in one of these dresses. You know, I was part of getting them out there. You know, I, I like them. I would. If I could wear them, I'd wear them myself. Next is Rowan Johnson with the coverage on the Firefly Trail as well as the opening of a new section of the Greenway Trail. The Firefly Trail is a trail planned to be 39 miles long and to connect from Athens to Union Point in Northeast Georgia, connecting Clark, Ogathorpe, and Greene counties. The Greenway Trail, another ongoing trail in Athens, has just opened a new two-mile section. The North Oak County Greenway uh, provides uh, miles of concrete path uh, for non-motorized use. It's going to give us a connection to neighborhoods along Barnett Shoals Road and College Station Road. The Greenway is more than a park. The Greenway is the watershed along the North and Middle Oak County Rivers, which also happens to have a trail being built. We gathered responses from the community as well as rail trail leaders regarding both the Firefly and Greenway trails.
Funding came from the city of Austin. This was a, a vote by the citizens of athens Clark County to, uh, and we get, we increase our, ta our uh, taxes by one penny for this particular project. So instead of us having a six cents tax, we have a seven cents tax. And actually, the end of this month, it will be an eight cents tax because we just started a new TSP loss, which will add another penny to our tax rate. That was able to fund an additional $10 million for Greenway Trails and $17.6 million to extend this part of the trail, this Firefly Trail, from Old Winterville Road all the way through Winterville to the Oglethorpe County line. I think it's great. It's an awesome multi-use trail for bikes, walking, running. Um, I think it's really cool that they're trying to connect different counties, so it's a different mode of transportation. I also think it's really awesome that they're utilizing an abandoned railroad line. Absolutely. I love to run. I like to take my dog for a walk. Um, and it's really nice because we don't have to worry about traffic. It's so fantastic to be able to get on your bicycle and not be worried about cars. Or walk your dog and not be worried about the exhaust from the cars going by. I think it's going to benefit our community in a lot of different ways. I think it will provide a safe transportation corridor for joggers, walkers, roller skaters, rollerbladers. You know, give them a way to kind of move through the community without having to interact with heavy traffic. I love to run. I like to take my dog for a walk. Um, and it's really nice because we don't have to worry about traffic. I just feel like it's kind of nice. It's like better than a gym because you can like run and like bike without I don't know, you're still outside. I think all cities um, have the right to have green space and different modes of transportation or else. Um, I think it also enhances mental health, physical health, so I think it's great for Athens. Um, I think that they repurposed the railroad and I think that that's a benefit. And I think anything that's going to help you health-wise, that's definitely a plus for the community. It's kind of like a combination of just being free out and in the open air. Um, one of the things I love about it is that I'll bike probably twice as far as I would ever drive. There are always complications because you, uh, you've got to get uh, right away and a lot of times when you're going across several people's property lines, sometimes they are agreeable, sometimes they're not. In this case, most of this is right on the edge of uh, public right away. So we've been able to, uh, uh, along with partnership with the state of Georgia, because technically this is the state's uh, right of way that we're, we're moving on. The economic benefits already up here on the intersection of Old Winterville Road and Highway 78, Quick Pick wants to come in and put a gas station there. The east side has just been neglected for so long, and we're already seeing here and in Winterville businesses and people that want to relocate right beside the trail. Like that. People are looking for recreation, they're looking to be able to ride bicycles, to walk, and to get people out of cars, because that's positive in the sense of we can uh, cut down on emissions from cars. Just recently, I know you all read about another cyclist being killed on the road. We know there are a lot of people that want to get out and exercise and stay healthy, and we know there are a lot of people that don't want to do it because it's dangerous on the road. So the reason that this has been so great for everybody is this alternative transportation resource and place to go out and get exercise. I feel like I come out here more often because it's a safer way of getting around Athens. Um, I use it a lot and I know I'll use it in the future. Um, I think it's a great form of exercise and I think it too that it'll show the community that we need this kind of thing, um, a different kind of transportation too. Um, it's just uh, good all around. For more information on these rail trails, visit the official Firefly Trail and Greenway Trail websites. DreamFest is an annual fundraising event where students come together to raise money for other undocumented students like themselves. We go to Alex Soto with the scoop. DreamFest is an annual event where Athens and Oconee students from ULEAP come together to share experiences as first-generation students as well as immigrants. Students share these experiences to raise awareness. The event raises money that go towards you lead scholarships and to inform the community. DreamFest is an annual festival that um, promotes educational equality. Um, it has um, various um, forms of entertainment within it. Uh, we have music, we have speeches, we have um, we have food entertainment. Um, we have. Um, painting for kids and uh, different forms of entertainment um, in order to draw attraction from people and from the community. 
in order to then educate them and raise awareness about educational equality. A bit of the purpose of DreamFest is really to make the community aware of some of the barriers that um, our students, particularly Latino students, face in pursuing their post-secondary education. Um, some of the segregationist policies that exist in the state of Georgia um, and some of the extra steps that our students have to um, have to go through to be able to continue their education. We also raise money at the event and all of the money goes directly to UNLEADS scholarship fund. So the students are really advocating for themselves and being a part of raising the money for the funds that goes back to their scholarship fund. Um, this event means a lot to me. It, it means that I can show my expressions in one space. I can speak the truth. I can show everybody again the way I feel about what's going on around this community, around this country. Dreamfest, what it means to me is a, uh, like she said, it's a safe space for people who, people like, not like us, but everyone who isn't treated like they belong here. People who, you know, been told that go back to your country because you, you don't belong here. Uh, Dreamfest, you won't hear that. You know, people are very supportive there, so it's like a support system for me. I feel very comfortable there. Um, so to me, it, it's really, as, as an educator and as an activist in the community, to see our students really take the forefront and take the lead on this. Um, it's, it's building our future leaders, building our future activists, really. And um, it's always a powerful moment. To, to have our students share their stories and share their experiences and to so that the students understand that they, they can change the policies, they do have a voice, um, they, they don't just have to sit around and, and kind of complain or gripe about the situation, they can be the agents of change, they can be the ones prompting the change. I am the daughter of an immigrant. I'm always told to count my blessings and be thankful that I can go to sleep in a country where I have enough to eat, enough hours in the day to see my friends and not worry about what could happen to them tomorrow. I am raised this way because my father grew up fearing tomorrow, fearing gunshots, fearing missing brothers, missing sisters. He lived when his life was a crime. This is a story I've heard countless times with countless faces and with countless dreams. So the theme for this year is really more focused on the resiliency of the community. So there's been a lot of attacks on the community, both legally, um, politically, and despite that, we're, we're still not only surviving, but thriving. And so I hope that the students that participate this year find in their stories of resiliency that they can inspire the younger students who maybe see these barriers to college or see these barriers to, to certain professions that they want to enter and feel a sense of hopelessness or or why should I continue going to school if it's going to be so hard to go to college, that they can see these stories and know that there are paths, that there are ways, and not just continue finding ways to navigate the, the segregationist policies, but find ways to change them. So we found these avenues to continue getting our education so that we can come back and be the ones that are, you know, the voices to make a change. I hope it inspires students to not be afraid to ask for help. I hope it inspires for many students to want to go to college and have that drive to like want to go to that college, want to go to your college, want to go to college. I hope this event inspires people who are not aware of this loss or people who just think differently to to open their minds and to be informed and to see that there is undocumented students and that we're not all rapists or drug dealers and that we're here for just a better education. I hope this event inspires people who are ignorant about what's going on in this community, about how we're struggling again and about how it's not all, you know, rainbows and butterflies. It's hard. People think it's not, but it, it really is. 
once you get to Dreamfest and you hear everyone else's story, you like you feel you put yourself in their position. You hear their story and you you like live of it through their eyes because that's the first time that you, like you hear about something that's happening so close to you that you're not even aware about. Gun control has been a training topic for a while, but along with that has been a topic of teachers having the right to carry in in case of a school shooting. Joseph Becker asked teachers at Cedar about how they felt about the topic. In the event of an active shooter in the school, what are you trained to do as a teacher for the students? So as teachers, uh, we're trained that if there was a shooter in the school, we go into what's called a hard lockdown. Then we would lock all of our doors, bring any students who's in the hallway, you know, in our room. And because I have windows in my classroom, and I would take them into my, the corner of my classroom and make sure they're safe and away from all doors and windows during a hard lockdown. Mr. Baker, have you ever fired a gun before? Yes. How long ago was that? Um, I think the last time I fired a gun would have been in November. So. I have fired a gun before. 20 years? I don't know. It was a long time ago. I was probably in high school. Last time was probably a week or two ago. In the um, prior military, I've fired several types of weapons. Um, from handguns to machine guns to uh, Mark 19s to you know, high explosive weapons. I've fired several types of weapons. Um, I I don't think that's the solution. I don't really. I don't think that teachers with guns is the solution. And I actually printed out this cartoon. I don't know if you've seen it it's circulating the internet. Uh, maybe you could post it um, with the with the piece that you're doing. But it's a teacher, and she's holding all of these responsibilities that we as teachers have. And they're things that aren't necessarily part of our contract when we sign up to be a job. This is not part of our teaching education at college. Situation. I personally, you know, even though that I own guns and shoot guns, I think putting more guns into a school, no matter if the teacher is trained or untrained, but obviously if you're putting a gun on them, you'd want them to be trained. I don't think that putting guns into the school, more guns into a school is a good idea. If trained and the word was out that they knew that there was a group here that, that would protect students, yes, I do think they would deter shooters. There's a reason they come after schools. Um, in, my, in my opinion, there's a reason. Um, you, you look at banks, you look at other secure places where they have guards who are armed, um, and you don't have, these, uh, have this happen there. And Truly, um, no. I think that we do ask a lot of our teachers. We ask them to be counselors. We ask them to be sometimes nutritionists. <laughs> we ask them to be mom, dad, coach, motivator, um, and then educator. And so now we also are asking them to be protector and security. Um, I'm very much against it. I think it puts, for a number of reasons, um, I think it puts teachers in an awkward situation. Um, I've never had training on, on the use of lethal force. Um, as a teacher, I don't want to have training on the use of lethal force in a situation. Uh, what do you believe are some alternative solutions to the problem of school shootings that have arisen in this day and age? Um, I think that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, if I knew the answer to that, I think I'd have a job in politics. But um, I think definitely just common sense gun laws. I think a waiting period, you know, everyone's saying, why don't we regulate guns the way we regulate driver's licenses and cars. I say the same. We should have periodic checks, um, insurance, there should be a license, you should be a certain age, there should be a test. Um, all of those things um, I think I think are a start in, in finding a solution to that to that problem. So I mean I think that there should be stricter guidelines for who can get certain types of weapons and you know the high capacity magazines should maybe not be as readily available. Uh, I also think though too, in turn, that you know, it's easy to blame the guns in these scenarios, but we also need to take a look at mental health in our country and how we are trying to combat that. And I know that that's something that we work on constantly, but I, there's a great trend between the people who are committing these mass shootings and then, you know, mental health issues. So. While we need to take a look at the guns, we also need to look at also how we help people with mental health in our country. Do you know what one plus one is? Do you know how to spell libraries? Well, Leah now found out in Word at the Shoals. What's up, you guys? It is episode two of Word at the Shoals. And remember last time we asked what was heavier, a pound of cotton or a pound of silver? 
Well, this time it's going to be a little different. We're going to have a little spelling bee and we're going to have some math problems. So stay tuned for more. All right. What's one plus one? Two. What's two plus two? Four. What's four plus four? Eight. What's eight plus eight? Sixteen. What's sixteen plus sixteen? Thirty-two. What's thirty-two plus thirty-two? Sixty-four. What's sixty-four plus sixty-four? One hundred twenty-eight. One plus one? Two. Two plus two? Four. Four plus four? Eight. Eight plus eight? Sixteen. Sixteen plus sixteen? Thirty-two. Thirty-two plus thirty-two? Sixty-four. Sixty-four plus sixty-four? One twenty-eight. One plus one? Two. Two plus two? Four. Four plus four? Eight. Eight plus eight? Sixteen. Sixteen plus sixteen? Thirty-two. Thirty-two plus thirty-two? Sixty-four. Sixty-four plus sixty-four? 156? No, no, I'm an idiot. 128. 128 plus 128? 256. 256 plus 256? 256. I love trying to say 12, 1, 2, 1. I don't. Well, I can do it. I need some paper, though. <laughs> 128 plus 128. Uh, 128 plus 256. There we go. 256 plus 256. 500. Wait. 512? Yes. 512 plus 512. Oh, God. 164. 100. I mean, 1,064. 1,064 plus 1,064. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, wait, no. Right? No, wait. 512 plus 512. No. 24. 1,024. 1,024 plus 1,024. You weren't even looking at the answer. You're just like going with whatever I say. I can say like 3,000. You'd be good. Okay. What's 128 plus 128? 256. What's 256 plus 256? 512. What's 512 plus 512? 1024. What's 1024 plus 1024? 2048. <laughs> What's 2048 plus 2048? 4096. What's 4096 plus 4096? 8192. What's 8192 plus 8192? I don't know. <laughs> all right, we're about to get into this spelling thing. All right, this is going to be a category from third grade spelling words. All right. So your first one will be raised. Raised? Raised. R-A-I-S-E-D. Correct. First word, stretch. S-T-R-E-T-C-H. Correct. Cottage. C O T T A G E. Correct. Different. D I F R. F F R. Oh no! F F E R E N T. And this was a Leonel with Worthy Shows. I hope you guys enjoyed me and everything that I had to bring. And stay tuned for episode three. Again, my name is Camille Caldwell. And my name is Jocelyn Clark. And this, this has been WJAGTP with your weekly school news.